Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live. Tonight, our special guests are William Mark McCullough and Tommy Rose from A Savannah Haunting, which is now streaming on demand. And I forgot the D on demand, but people can fill that in. <laughs> Sorry, guys, welcome both of you. To let people know, Mark directed, wrote, also appears in the film. Tommy's also a star in the film. Welcome to the both of you guys. Thank you so much for being here. How are you guys doing? Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It is a pleasure to have the both of you here. And this movie, uh, it sort of slipped through my radar, like I was telling you before we went live. And I watched it just uh, a week or so ago, and I absolutely loved it. So, Mark, let's go ahead and start with you. The movie, A Savannah Haunting, is inspired by events that took place in the house you grew up and currently live in, if I'm correct. How did those paranormal mm -hmm. events in your childhood affect you going into your adult life? You know, the paranormal situation when I was younger was not nearly as intense as it was uh, when I moved back to Savannah as an adult. Um, as a kid, it was more mischievous in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved back, uh, I was out in LA and I moved back to Savannah for some family reasons. And the nature of the haunting had turned very dark at that point. And um, uh, that's when it kind of scared us. And uh, we took some some measures that, you know, try to protect ourselves a bit. So uh, the, the house is still yours, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mine and my family's, yes. Is it still plagued with activity? It is. Uh, you know, it had calmed down. Like I said, it had been mischievous for a while. We we brought in a demonologist to uh, calm it down. And the last few months, it's been uh, it's been much more active. Uh, there's a there's there's a portal in the house that can kind of get opened, and I think it's been open the last couple months. The it's been uh, much more intense here uh, recently. Now, Tommy, I got to ask you this: You shot the movie in this house. I'm sure yes. Mark shared the stories with you. Did anything out of the ordinary happen while you were there? So, <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, I say unfortunately, everybody else seems to think it's a blessing, but I was <laughs> the only one that didn't have any kind of like crazy experience. I mean, all of my co-stars, everybody else on set had crazy experiences, all these crazy stories. And Honestly, honestly, I felt left out and it got to a point where I would literally go into rooms like when I wasn't filming or, you know, we were in between takes or something. And I would literally go into rooms, close the door, turn off all the lights and like, you know, kindly, graciously be like, hey, if you guys want to you know, be careful you what you wish for. See, that's what everyone said, but nothing ever happened. I think maybe there was like some like some unspoken like respect between me and the spirits maybe, maybe. I, don't, I don't know but maybe i was too nice and maybe they thought it wouldn't be fun since i was like well, so to be scared there is a know. saying that people who are open and believe in it don't get as affected as those who are more skeptical well it makes sense i mean i think if i were a ghost like i would want to mess with the people that mm -hmm. didn't believe in ghosts exactly. you know what i'm saying yeah exactly exactly <laughs> now let's talk about your character lilith um i dubbed lilith as a temptress okay um what was your initial take on your character yeah um i think that she's i think you nailed it with that uh but i think definitely that she's a temptress in many more ways than one um, I think that she uses so many different outlets and so many different channels to really have such a hold on this family. Yeah. And uh, I think she does it differently with um, all the characters that she interacts with. And I think that it's genius. It's, she really is an evil genius when it comes to figuring out exactly what makes these people tick and really, yeah. yeah, really honing in on what she knows is their greatest weakness, whether it's, you know, feeling left out, feeling alone, um, or, you know, needing more attention or needing, you know, I think she's really good at oh, yeah. spotting what a character is looking for and using that against them. Absolutely. Now, Mark, uh, you came up with this screenplay 
to tell the story about the events that took place during your childhood and up till today. Now, is there any truth to the actual story that was inspired by real events, or did was that all sort of uh, made up to sort of explain and, and put it into a, a storytelling mode, for lack of a better term? Yeah, no, exactly. Like, what I set out to do was to create a, a horror film that captured what it feels like to actually live in a haunted house, mm -hmm. right? And and kind of uh, capture that sense of, of dread and, and almost like the walls are closing in around you. Uh, you know, I, I've had some pretty terrifying things happen in the house, but I've never had blood come out of the walls, you know, yeah. I mean, too crazy. Um, but I also didn't want to thrust my family into the story. So what I did is I created the... Uh, you know, I wrote the family, it just made them up. And then I applied the the supernatural phenomena that had happened to my family and to guests throughout the years to those people. Now, interestingly enough, there were a few things that I made up or I thought I made up. And after the film came out, we were working on a documentary about the history of the haunting. And we brought in a historian and found out uh, some of those things that I made up, like, like, for instance, the fact that there was a plantation house here mm -hmm. that burned down in the Civil War. That's actually true, and I had no idea about that, and only found out after we finished filming. Wow, that is freaky. Now, there are a lot of movies out there that are inspired based on true events. What I liked what you did with this film is how you open and close the film with actual family members in a true documentary style, and then we break into the film. What inspired you to take that route? You know, the film played at quite a few festivals around the world and Tommy won some great acting awards and, uh, you know, we, we were very proud of how the film did. But uh, originally we didn't have that. And uh, a good friend of mine in L.A. had she had seen some of the interviews we had from the documentary mm -hmm. and she watched the film and she loved it. And she said, I, I think it would be really helpful for the audience to get a sense of some of the real people people and i'd shown her that you know that final i don't want to give it away to the audience but that final shot during the closing credits yeah and she was so freaked out about it and she's like you really should include this stuff so that so that it's more than just inspired by they get a good sense of of the the people actually uh, experience the stuff i thought it was very refreshing i mean it was good to see it was great to see a film that was inspired by real events and you get to see the actual people before and after the movie's over so Kudos to you on that. Now, Tommy, do you believe Lilith and her family created the evil that existed in that house? Or did the evil take over the family? I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think that there was definitely, uh, and you know, hearing about some of the history of it, I think there was definitely already um, a lot of evil there and a lot of... Uh, some awful awful history there yeah. um and i think that you know that can have a toll on a person but i definitely think that it 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 rooted from somewhere you know and i i think that it they fed off of each other i think that the you know the bad tendencies in this family just kind of absorbed the evil that was already there yeah yeah um and it just turned into now, Ma now, Mark, <laughs> did you intentionally leave this part of the script vague in regards to what are we actually dealing with here? Are we talking about a family that during the Civil War time, the workers on the plantation, the slaves revolted against them? Are we dealing with demons? Is this something on, you know, that never walked the earth? Did you intentionally leave that vague for the audience to sort of decide on their own? You know, there's actually there was a scene in the movie that played during the film festival route that kind of laid that out more explicitly. Mm -hmm. And we decided to pull it, make it a little more vague. But I'll, I'll give this clue for the audience. There are no ghosts in a Savannah haunting. OK, OK, that makes a lot of sense for the uh, if you see it, it'll make a lot of sense. Now, uh, Tommy, uh, Mark here plays your dad in the film. OK, mm -hmm. Um do you think Lilith's actions are her own or are they orchestrated by her dad and her family? I think 
I think a lot of it comes from her father and her yeah. family. Uh, but I think that the Lilith we see in a Savannah haunting is a very warped version of a girl that once was. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, like, like Mark said, I, Mark and I had, a, I had a lot of conversations on set about Lilith and, uh, um, we had a lot of conversations about, you know, does she have any redeemable qualities whatsoever? <laughs> Um, and I think that what we kind of continued to find was that she's almost a, she almost isn't even the Lilith that was originally there way back when, you know, she's, she's, she's almost a, a, an evil copy yeah. of a girl that once existed. I, I completely agree. Watching this film and when we see you in the end, when we sort of do that little time shift and we see Lilith back at her time. I I see a girl who sort of was born into this family that had didn't have a to say in it and she seems unhappy but is just going along to just please her dad. And then we see the current Lilith who after going through what that family's been through has totally become something completely different. And that mm. that that is what resonated with me, especially in regards to your character. Now, um, Mark, yeah, you... can I share something quick about about that and, and Tommy's portrayal of Lilith? Absolutely. Um, from the beginning, we always had an idea of of a bigger story than a Savannah haunting. Um, you know, kind of a story telling how the haunting got started and then how things finally wrap up. So when we were doing the auditions. We had all the actors audition with with the Lilith character that you see in a Savannah Haunting, mm -hmm. but just thinking far ahead, we also had them audition with scenes from 1864, where Lilith is a sweet, thoughtful, loving, you know, Southern belle. And I mean, we can, we auditioned a lot of people, and Tommy came in and was able to deliver the Lilith that you see, which is you awesome. know very manipulative mm -hmm. and dark. But she was also able to deliver this wonderfully sweet and genuine and just kind version of Lilith. And there was no one else who could do that. Like there were some people who could deliver the dark, but not the light. Some could deliver the light, not the dark. And and my partner, Alexis Nelson, and I were just blown away because Tommy just so believably delivered both. Exactly. And, I and completely talk agree. About the fact that that character gets darkened from who she really is in a Savannah Haunt. With that time jump from 64 to the present, it's, it really is two different people. I mean, uh, I don't believe you had any dialogue in that flashback scene. Uh, no. No, you, we just see you walking up to your dad. But even in that no dialogue, just your the acting through the body language, the motion, I saw somebody who was just really doing this against their will putting up that fake smile, walking up to her dad, paying him the proper respect, but underneath it all, extremely unhappy. Now, Lilith, in the beginning of the film, we see her go after April, the daughter, attached to the daughter. And then we see that shift to the current family's dad. Is that because Lilith for lack of a better term, is a spoiled brat and did not like getting rebuffed by April in the cemetery and just ditched her? Or was it part of a grand master plan in your thoughts? I think that Lilith knows that no matter what happens, she's winning. I don't think there's a moment that Lilith is concerned that she's not going to get her way. Um, I do think she throws little hissy fits when she doesn't. Uh, but I definitely think that instead of a, you know, oh, that made me mad. Well, I'm going to do this to get back at you. It's more of a, oh, you think you're, you think you have any control in this situation. That's hilarious. Yeah. Watch yeah. this. You know, I, I think that it's Lilith has no concern that she's not going to succeed with either one of these characters. I think that it's just her deciding what's going to be most entertaining for her that day. 
<laughs> you know? uh, yep, that that pretty much sums it up. Uh, yeah. Now, now, Mark, you give us this plot twist in the film that I did not see coming towards the end. Uh, when we're talking about the mom, Rachel, the present day mom, what can you tell the audience who's going to sit down and watch this film today, tomorrow, a week from now? Uh, what's going through her head? What, what's what's up with Rachel? Because by the end of the film, we just don't know what's 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 up with this woman. How do you explain Rachel? You know, I've had a lot of audience members reach out and have very different takes on the movie, right? There are some people who, I, I say most people look at the movie and go, okay, this is a classic haunted house film where the mom was manipulated and kind of slowly loses her grasp on insanity, or on sanity as, she, as the movie progresses. And there are other people who look at it as if we just watch the story through the mom's eyes and she's an unreliable narrator who just told this story but none of the supernatural stuff actually happened. It was her and her, because you know, there's all these hints to the movie about the mom obviously had some major mental issues in the past. Yeah. Uh, you know, April several times mentions, you know, we don't want to go through what we went through before, mom's doing it again. And we leave that very vague, but obviously she's seeing a psychiatrist. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's really hard to, to get too into this without giving this away that to us. And I think yeah. it's such a fun twist, you know? It is. But, but for me, no matter what the truth of the world is for her, everything she does is from a place of pain and grief, right? From her perspective on yeah. the world. And I think that's enough, right? I think that that for the audience, that's that's really all they have to, to go into it. Understanding is she's someone who feels so lost and, and she's not really getting the love and support that she needs from those around her um, to help her through this, you know, this, this period that she's going through. And it could be anything. It could be a, the tragedy suffered. It could be a mental illness. It could really be anything that the audience sees it as. And I really like that. Now, uh, Tommy, let's talk about that scene where you rise up out of the well drenched in blood. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, what was that like? Uh, just, it must have been really uncomfortable, first of all. You're covered head to toe in blood. Uh, how long did it take? What was that like? So that was actually, it's funny because I think that that night went from one of the hardest days of filming to one of the most fun. Uh, and just because the makeup was so, so they use this thing and I, I believe, uh, what did they call it? I think it was Mark, what was it? Was it like clump blood or something? It was, uh, they had a like word. A very blood. Yeah, they had they had a bunch of special names for it, but it was this blood that it was like it's not like you know Halloween store blood yeah. that's just like liquid. It's sticky, mm -hmm. and it it literally like I had these crazy bruises on the bottoms of my arms the next day from like my arms would stick to my sides, and I would like pull them up, and like the blood it like sticks together so strong. And so they put this all over my entire body, right? And basically I can't sit down. I can't go to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't do anything. So I'm like, you know, and then like, we also had to put a wig cap on and then the hair that you see on me, that's not my hair. They had to use a wig because we were scared that the blood was going to stain my hair because I'm blonde. So <laughs> it stains very, very easily. And I was like, I don't want to be a... You know a redhead and then the continuity is, <laughs> the continuity is just you know terrible from that point on so anyways we had to use a fake blonde wig drench that in blood so i was completely from head to toe drenched in blood fake hair you know, all kinds of stuff right and so i can't lean on anything so i was just like kind of like standing around <laughs> like this like waiting to film you know and then when we actually started filming, so I was kind of a nervous wreck that I was going to ruin it at some point. And I knew, I knew they would fix it, but still, you know, I couldn't go to the bathroom, couldn't sit down or anything. So I'm sitting, I'm like standing up. So we go and we film it. And then when we started filming, I had so much fun freaking everybody out. It was huh. so great. And like, I would literally like come up to people and just like stare at them really weird. And like, <laughs> and like every, like my mom freaked out, everybody freaked. And I would do like little weird dances. I had too much fun with it. You and had, it was like really 
you had so much blood on you. I had to do a double take to make sure it was you. I mean, I think Mark outdid the Carrie scene from the original uh, Carrie movie (laughs) with the amount of blood. Mark, before we go, uh, there are some references in this movie to hoodoo. When you were doing any kind of research for the the screenplay, uh, what part of uh, what part of hoodoo does it play into the history of Savannah, if any? Uh, there's a huge history of, of hoodoo in Savannah. Um, to this day, there are folks who who search out hoodoo practitioners. Uh, my partner and I actually visited a village that's about. 30 minutes outside of Savannah and the whole village it has been there since I think 1971, 72. Uh, it's built around that and it's a, it's a religion. Uh, so yeah, it's, it has a long history here and, and we didn't get too deep into it, into the movie. We kind of mentioned it a few times, but the reason I wanted to incorporate that is because, you know, some of the theories we brought in a, a, a voodoo pr- practitioner to the house uh, because we thought there may be some type of curse that had been put on the house. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was interesting, like, you know, going and, and touring the uh, the village. And we spoke to this priestess who's I think she's 82 years old. And she was so uh, she was so interesting. Sounds interesting. I mean, that's I mean, I you know, it was uh, it was a great addition to the film. And just to bring in that element and it just makes people question it some more. Uh, for everybody out there, the movie's called A Savannah Haunting. It's available on your streaming platform of choice. It is also available uh, to stream on Hoopla and Canopy. Mark, I don't know if you're familiar with Canopy, but for anybody who doesn't know what Canopy is, Canopy is a streaming service that if you have a, a library uh, membership, you can actually get seven movies to watch per month free. And we're talking about premium movies not movies that are 30 40 years old but this movie is all over the place please check it out i really really enjoyed it uh i want to thank the both of you tommy william mark mccullough uh you did an excellent job on the film uh tommy i'll leave it up to you do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go oh man Uh, i'm I'm happy to be here uh thank you for having us this was great um, uh, absolutely, yeah. it's my pleasure. And Mark, hey, can I can I share one quick story about Tommy before, oh, before yeah. we hang out? Love oh it. no, I'm scared. <laughs> but this is a good story. So she's such a trooper because when she was doing that bloody scene coming out of the out of the well, you know, like she was standing there for hours. I didn't realize she was there for hours. You know, all <laughs> sticky and so I felt terrible. And we had talked about making the character look very creepy with her movements. And we were totally planning on doing visual effects to change the way her body moved to make it more unreal. And Tommy gets on set and starts doing that creepy stuff that you see in the movie. Yeah. And we're on the way. There's literally not one second of VFX. We didn't change anything. We just did the magic that she she brought to uh, set. So that was just like was body weird. movement ad living right still, there. I still do that to freak my mom out all the time. And <laughs> like for a week, she was like, Tommy, I swear, if you ever do that, like in during nighttime, I will not speak to you for a week. <laughs> like she freaked her out so much because I would do it all the time. Like even when you're not in in full blood, it's still like a weird yeah. way to move. I thought, and I, did, I honestly didn't know I could move like that until like I just kind of was like I feel like this is how a demonic creature would move. You know? I thought I thought it was totally film manipulated to like in post production to make it look like that. I didn't know that was thank all you. you. So good job. Thank you, Tommy. No, thank you. <laughs> Again, thank you to our guests, William Mark McCullough, Tommy Rose. Thank you to our audience, those of you who are tuning in live, and those of you who'll be watching this later on. I had a blast tonight. The movie, again, is called The Savannah Haunting. Rent it, buy it, available on your streaming platform of choice. On behalf of William, Tommy, and myself, stay safe, stay walking. Good night, everybody.